and we are started. Hey, okay, thanks, Eli. All right, I call the order of the Administration and Finance Committee meeting for Monday, April 6, 2020. The clerk has taken roll and we have a quorum this evening. I'll start by saying executive order number 20-07, uh, COVID-19 executive order number five, Governor Pritzker has suspended certain rules of the Open Meetings Act, specifically that members of a public body must be physically present. Therefore, the Village Board has chosen to conduct its upcoming meetings remotely. Uh, so first item on the agenda is the approval of minutes from the March 16th, 2020 Administration and Finance Committee committee meeting. I'll entertain a motion for their passage at this time. So made. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussions on the minutes? No. Hearing none, all those no. in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes have been approved. Next agenda item is the warrant. This evening, staff has presented the warrant in the amount of $518,904.25, and I'll entertain a motion for their passage. So made, Frank. Motion and a second. Any questions or discussions on the warrant? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the warrants have been approved. Next agenda item is resolution 22R20, settle interfund balances. I'll entertain a motion at this time. So made. Second. Motion and a second. And we have a staff report this evening. I will give that. Uh, this is a housekeeping item we do annually to reimburse the general fund for the year. Um, for disbursements that were made throughout the year on behalf of other funds. In this instance, all our TIF funds reimbursing the general fund. Total transfer is $2,418,809.47. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Are there any questions from the committee re regarding resolution 22R20? No. 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 Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution 22R20 has passed a positive recommendation and will go to the board meeting. Next will be resolution 23R20, MFT appropriation for fiscal year 2020-2021. I'll entertain a motion at this time. So so made. Motion and a second and another staff report, please. I'll give that one as well. This is the annual resolution we do to appropriate um, for motor fuel tax funds. This year, the amount is $612,600. Um, to be used on road salt and street lighting costs for the upcoming budget year ending April 30th of 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Any questions from the committee on resolution 23R20? No. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, resolution 23R20 will also go to the April 20th board meeting with a positive recommendation. Uh, the next item would be resolution 24R20, authorizing Illinois 251 and Forest Hills Road pavement repairs. I'll entertain a motion at this time. So made. Second. second. Here, a motion and a second, and a staff report on this item, please. Chris, you're on mute, sir. Looks like your mic is still muted, Chris. Bottom left corner. There you are. Yeah. I had to use the keyboard. Sorry about that. All right. Not on mute. Uh, as many of you know, there is uh, some areas of bad pavement up at Forest Hills Road on the west and east side of the intersection that are actually under our jurisdiction. They're not part of IDOT's jurisdiction. Uh, a couple of years ago, we worked with a contractor to uh, get some pricing to replace pavement on the uh, east side of the intersection only. And at the time, it was about $35,000. Uh, we thought and we knew actually that IDOT was working on plans to resurface Illinois 251 from the state line down to Forest Hills Road uh, and uh, that we'd have an opportunity to, to work with their contractor at the time and with the hopes of, of receiving better pricing, which we certainly did. Uh, the resolution that's in front of you uh, would allow us to use about $5,400 to uh, fix payment on either side of the intersection uh, that's pretty desperately needed, especially on the east side. That pavement's in pretty terrible shape. Thank you, Mr. Dopkins. Any questions or comments from the committee on this? I have one. Mr. Sipes. Thank you. Um, Chris, was there any cons consideration at all to make that two turning lanes going south 
off of 251 because a lot of times there's cars backed up. I mean, pretty halfway down almost to the bridge. Yeah, um, this is what's called a 3R project. So it's a resurfacing and pavement rehabilitation type project. IDOT's not looking to make geometric improvements to uh, widen the intersection. Um, you know, a few, a few weeks ago when we gave the report about our CIP program, one of the things I mentioned was that, you know, Forest Hills Road um, is in our long-term plan and we need to partner with IDOT to make that improvement. Um, what, when we put in dual left turn lanes, there needs to be widening, of course, on, on the receiving leg of the intersection and that's not a small undertaking up there by any means. Um, so now that our funding's approved, uh, we will certainly be, you know, starting those discussions with IDOT um, in order to get this on their radar screen because we'd certainly like them to pay for their share of the improvements as well. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, resolution 24R20 is on tonight's board agenda with a positive recommendation from the committee. Next would be resolution 25R20, continuing to impose a non-home rule municipal retailers occupation tax and a non-home rule municipal service occupation tax. Mr. Chairman? At this time. Can I make a comment? Yes, sir. Uh, before you make a motion on this, I wanna make sure everyone's clear. Lori and I spoke. I had forwarded the original draft down to the Illinois Department of Revenue on the, uh, uh, to be safe on the safe side to say, hey, take a look at this. We'll, we don't wanna certify it, send it down there at the end of April and then find out they wanted some change and that could bring into jeopardy the ability to impose uh, the tax continuing as of July 1. Um, they did send back two very minor, but changes. Uh, Lori circulated that. So I want everybody to be clear that's been substituted out and you'll be voting on the resolution as Lori sent it out that had the two minor changes. Thank you, Mr. Green. All right, I'll entertain a motion on resolution 25R20. So made. Second. I hear a motion and a second and a staff report. Yes, thank you. So as you all are aware, uh, the village in July 1 of 2008 passed their first um, uh, ordinance imposing this tax, a 1% tax on uh, the sale of retail goods. Can't and hear him. Yeah, Tim, we're having some problems hearing you. I didn't know if that was just me. No, it's me. The mic is on. There we go, we can hear you a little better now. Hmm, really? Uh, how is this? Yep. Okay, good. Mic good. sensitive. I think you gotta really <clears throat> talk into it. <laughs> okay. Get so, danger close. In uh, this is a continuation of the sales tax that was imposed uh, for the first time in 2008. Can you hear me now? That's backing out again. No. It looks like help might be on the way. Yes. <laughs> I saw Michelle rush out. One minute. Hello, I am not, in fact, Michelle, but I'm Tim. Um, we're trying a different computer here. So, um, as you know, this is a continuation of the 1% sales tax that was